Right, well, day five hasn't consisted of a great deal, in fact so little that I'm not going to uh, do this on its own. Um, now this uh, Class M Red Dwarf I've just finished scanning is not the most important thing in this system, as you can see. There is a neutron star behind me, which was the uh, point where I entered the system. There we are. So, there's one neutron star, and indeed, I'm about to go and visit another. Because there's another one right here. So, uh, let's go and check that one out as well. Friendship drive Content, but not really worth bothering with. So, well, there we are. So, two uh, neutron stars with it in two systems. That'll do. Uh, right. Mm, back when there is something to come back to. Okay, so I am currently enjoying the uh, pleasure of the uh, root plotting at its usual um, or doing its usual routine when you get to this far into this trip um, it's been five minutes and I know that that means it's nowhere near done what doesn't help is the fact that it says plot root bracket 99% which suggests it's almost done whereas in fact it's nowhere near done so that percentage is utterly meaningless now if you think if the area is uh, looking a bit sparse well uh, take a second look at uh, the star classes that I have selected there are a huge number which are not showing that's how many there are around here <laughs> and that is why it's taking a fucking eternity for the uh, thing to plot the route because now the uh, star field is so dense that uh, well there are fuck knows how many uh, various connotations that it can take for me to get from the system that I'm at to this one that I want to go to and of course because Frontier Developments have programmed the most rudimentary system that they could which is what they always do it sits there and works out every single one before then showing you one I just want the quickest that's all I want but no now one of my um, previous videos uh, somebody posted a link to a method of uh, skipping this uh, that link is extremely old and uh, the galaxy map has been changed at least two or three times since that was done and it hasn't worked for God knows how long so you can give it a try if you want but uh, don't get your hopes up for it to, to succeed I'm thinking that from now on my progress is really going to slow down because I really can't afford to fart ass about 
with waiting for uh, the route to be plotted and instead um, just do maybe like two or three jumps ahead possibly having to limit it to just doing one jump at a time so it, it is taking the piss to put it mildly so uh, the thing is I knew this was coming now you can imagine a newcomer who is thinking well I'll try something a bit bold uh, you know, I've only been playing the game for a short while but let's go to the centre of the uh, galaxy and then eventually he will encounter this and if he isn't an active member of the community and let's face it I'm not but I know about this let's say he doesn't he could assume that the game has crashed and this is going to happen all the time now until I get out of this very dense area which is immense in size I'm going to have to put up with this bollocks every single time so like I say I'll just be planning like one or two jumps ahead so that I don't have to sit through all this bullshit yes it means that you know I'm going to have to put up with the tedium of going to the galaxy map and setting a new route every two or three jumps but it's got to be better than just sitting here okay it's finally done it now yeah, notice there's a nebula in the background there, the uh, BOLP AA-A883. Now I am actually going to investigate that nebula. There are two neutron stars in there in two different systems. Uh, so uh, I'll take a look. Now as you can see I'm still in that system with the second neutron star. And of course I stupidly didn't slow down when I was uh, plotting the course. I'm now doing 1,120 times the speed of light. I'm approaching the sort of speeds that I would be doing if I was doing the fucking uh, uh, run to uh, Hutton Orbital. And just to really uh, finish it off, this next system is going to be a brown dwarf star system. The reason I know that is from the name. And I'll come to that a bit later on. Four, three, two, one, engage. We'll see if I'm right. I am sure I will be. So I can't fuel scoop here, but I should be able to fuel scoop at the next system unless it's a brown dwarf. Uh, not brown dwarf, unless it's a neutron star. Because those last two neutron stars had that same designation as this one. I'll be very surprised, but well, we'll give it a try. Just in case. Frameshift drive charging. And yeah, no, my luck, like this fucking video won't record probably, but. Oh well. fine okay well uh, that'll do for now I'll be back when there is something to come back to rest assured that will not be any more videos showing how long it takes for the route to be plotted well maybe not 
Okay, uh, next update. And I'm <laughs> just look at that fucking Starfield. That is insane. Uh, <laughs> and I've still got a hell of a long way to go. I've still got over 10,000 uh, to uh, cover. But uh, I mentioned in a uh, previous uh, video that um, I've partly worked out what these uh, nameless planets, uh, their designations, nameless planet, nameless stars, what these designations stand for. Now, modesty and truth forbids me to uh, lay sole claim to this. I was actually put onto it by uh, Commander Mono, the uh, exploration uh, genius. Um, and okay, yeah, he did spot the uh, the trend, and uh, it has certainly been working out in, uh, as far as how he's reading it. It's not quite right. It's it's more a case of how he's reading it is a handy coincidence compared to what it really does mean, or at least what I think it really does mean. He is reading it as uh, the designation will tell him whether he can fuel scoop from a certain uh, star and whether the system is going to have decent planets in it or not. Now I started with um, following that uh, pattern to see if it worked out but I found rather quickly that what I, when I was expecting a decent amount of planets and some good planets to scan it wasn't always working out and then it dawned on me as to why so we'll use this system that we're going to be going to next as uh, the example in so it's uh, uh, flops I, I think that's how you pronounce it YL-J D10-1945 now all of these follow this same pattern sometimes it will be like flops sector but nevertheless it always follows letter letter dash letter letter number dash number sometimes there isn't the second dash number so it can end letter number and that's it now the first part the YL-J to me must be a grid reference um, I can't see anything else that it's uh, referring to now the numbers so in this case 10-1945 uh, I haven't figured out them entirely yet but they must have some reference to that first letter uh, before the numbers in this case D now that is the important bit as far as I can work out that is referring to either the luminosity of the system or and I'm starting to think this is uh, more accurate uh, the total uh, solar mass of the stars within that system now the reason I've, I'm figuring that is because D tells me straight away that there it's going to have a high luminosity a high solar mass so this star is probably going to be um, an F a G or a K so let's hyperspace there and uh, take a look there is also a pretty good chance that there is going to be more than one Sun there in fact there's more than a pretty good chance in fact these can also contain blue white stars so if it does have a blue white then there's a very good chance it will be the only star in that system it is a blue white it's a class A so let's take a look and see what else is in here as far as uh, the stars go yeah, so it is all stars here now I'm going to guess that the other stars are not that luminous they'll be luminous enough but they are very in 
fact, this system is probably borderline with uh, the next class up. Um, so after D, obviously it's E, and E is the brightest of the lot. Now this is only a class M red dwarf that I've got selected here, and 15,000 is too far away, I can't bother to go there. So let's check the next one out. The next one's a B. Now this one's going to be nowhere near as luminous. This is probably going to be a single red dwarf. And the the order that they go, so it starts at A, uh, and it goes through to E, and uh, that's the order of either, say, luminosity or solar mass uh, total from lowest to highest. So if that letter is an A, you know it's going to be a brown dwarf. It could be a couple of brown dwarfs, could even be three brown dwarfs, but the luminosity and the uh, solar mass is very low and you're not going to fuel scoop there. B will allow you to fuel scoop as will C, D and E. But B is likely to be a single red dwarf, so we'll try this out and see uh, if this um, prediction comes true. the red dwarf. Fuel scooping. Okay, so there are other planets here but no other stars, so yeah, it lives up to that. Next is a C. Now C is not so easy to predict as far as the uh, type of star or the number of stars. But the one thing that we can certainly predict is that we will be able to fuel scoop there. Now, say, so, um, the reason I'm thinking it's solar mass is because uh, the last couple of uh, systems that I went to that had neutron stars had the D um, designation. And yet, in the case of uh, the last uh, neutron star Friendship system I went to, that was the only star in it. So I'm thinking it can't be luminosity. I mean, obviously, neutron stars do have an enormous amount of solar mass, even though they're very small. So that's what is pretty much convincing me that that's what it means. But that gives you a way then of being able to predict whether or not you can fuel scoop in the next system. If it's an A, then obviously you can't. Now, anything else, say so, uh, B and C, you certainly will be able to. But D's, you can't guarantee it because it could be a neutron star, it could be a white dwarf star. The, the thing is, obviously, the... Um, the galaxy map will tell you because uh, hmm, I'll take a look at that. That looks promising as far as uh, potential water world. But yeah, obviously the, uh, the galaxy map will show you if it's a non-sequence star or if it's a white dwarf. In which case, you know you won't be able to fuel scoop it, uh, fuel scoop from it. But uh, being a D means that it's very likely to be uh, either of those. If it's a black hole, it will almost certainly be an E. Obviously, you are not going to be sure scooping from that either. Now, I'm using um, blue stars as like my markers. That's at the end of each like 1,000 light year run that I do. I always end at uh, a blue white star, preferably either a B or an O. I don't really want to be stopping at A's. And the last couple of uh, systems that I've been to that have B's in them, uh, yeah, Class B uh, Blue Whites, they have, there we go, Water World, uh, they also uh, had the E designation in their names. 
and with very good reason they were definitely uh, extremely bright they um, both times had uh, two um, class B blue whites in them so very high uh, well very high luminosity as well as very high solar mass so those names are not completely random I mean okay you'd have to be a bit you know fucking stupid to think that they were just completely random the last, uh, the last part is, or rather the last letter I suppose at the start of the numbered uh, section that's the part that you definitely want to uh, keep an eye on when you're uh, heading along well anywhere if you're doing any kind of exploration obviously if you're doing exploration as long as this fucking thing then uh, yeah I suppose it does come in handy So you can you can sort of get a bit of an idea of what to expect within the uh, the system itself. Now I'm thinking that somewhere in those designations, possibly the numbers, that may have some relevance with regards to the number of planets that are in there. Now it's not a simple matter of you know the number is telling you how many planets are in it that, that's no no it's not doing that but it must have some kind of relevance there so we'll try with the next one so B47-149 so that is going to be another uh, class M star so another red dwarf but let's see if the 47 or the 149 has any uh, relevance with regards to uh, how many planets are within it There may be a second red dwarf, I'm sure I'll pass one to sign of the system. Right, 19. Doesn't really have a great deal of relevance as far as the numbers that I can immediately see. V47-149. Well, there's three high metal content planets. That one's not too far. They're fucking small though, so I'm going to have to get up close to scan them. So anyway, right, that's... Uh, oh yeah, I forgot the fucking fuel scoop. So that's um, something else that I'm uh, working on. I'll see if I can figure out any more as far as the uh, name uh, or the designations of these... Uh, nameless systems go but uh, definitely uh, kudos to uh, Mono for initially pointing it out because for one thing it's giving me something to do while I'm flying through systems that have fuck all in them which I've been doing for about three days now uh, we're into day six and uh, yeah, so it's given me something to uh, think on while I'm uh, out here doing this. Just to uh, bring you up to date, uh, max distance from the start is now 15,413. Total highest place jumps is now at the 10,048. System visited is at 5,239. So we're getting through it. Um, in fact, when I finish scanning this star, I'll see something else which I kept meaning to show in videos and I've not done it yet, I keep bloody forgetting. So there we go, here's a high metal content. But uh, if we take a look at the galaxy map there, 
and then we'll uh, zoom right out now you can see how many bloody uh, nebulae are all around me here but there we are, this, there is the uh, center around here that's how far away I am from it and that's how far away I am from uh, the populated zone so I've done that much distance and I've got like this much to go although from here I will be say making some diversions um, I'm going to the uh, Bope uh, Nebula then from there I'm taking quite a diversion because I'm going to be going somewhere in this direction to the uh, Lycoidal uh, Nebula then I'm going to be going back in another sort of zigzag uh, in this direction towards the Great Annihilator and then carrying on to uh, Sagittarius A not out so right there you go that will do for this uh, little update um, back when there is something to come back to Okay, so this is uh, the last jump for this uh, thousand light years that I plotted. E, um, in this designation, so this is going to be uh, pretty bright. I know it's a type B or class B blue white star. It could be the only thing in here. Class B blue white is enough to give uh, a system the designation. I only found that out during this run. There was one system which had uh, type B blue white. It was the only thing there, and uh, yep, it had the E. Uh, so this is clearly not the only thing in here, though. Oh yeah, suns. Uh, they're all quite spread out as they always are when they're all being uh, blue whites. But they don't, it doesn't look too bad actually, so I'll scan this one. That will then be it for this uh, session. I'll be coming back on for another session tonight. So I'll just actually end it with a view of... Fuck it, I can't, don't think I can show it because uh, I'm too close to the uh, blue-white star. Let's get a bit further away from it. But uh, somewhere around there is the nebula that I'm heading to. I'm now about 700 light-years away from it. So I'll definitely uh, be there tonight. So that will probably be the starting point of the next video. I'll splice what clips I've got together and put this one up. And um, I still can't see them. Oh, there it is. There's a nebula there. That's where I'm heading the uh, boat bloody fucking blah nebula so fucking so yeah that will be um, yeah where I start at the uh, next video where's it gone there it is so I am relatively close to it, 700 light years. So let's just show on the galaxy map. Yeah, there it is. Pope AA-AH83. So yeah, I haven't got too far to go to uh, reach that. Of course, with all the stars on there, it's suddenly not quite so easy to see. But yeah, that'll be the starting point for the next one. So uh, that'll do for now. Um, back when there is something to come back to. And in the meantime, go away.